Contrary to the rumors that you've heard, I was not born in a manger. I was actually born on Krypton and sent here to save the planet Earth. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong. Yes, we can. Obama's tax care plan will include coverage of all essential medical services. Yes, we can. Obama is a cruel hoax. He works for Wall Street. He's an agent of finance capital. Where did you come up with the number $700 billion? Here's the uh, Treasury spokeswoman's quote. It's not based on any particular data point. We just really wanted to come up with a really big number. To Democrats and Republicans who've opposed this plan, I say, step up to the plate. A few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. Secretary Henry Paulson is no George Washington. I don't think anyone questions, Mr. Kashkari, that you're working hard. Our question is who you're working for. Obama pledged that he would resume the security and prosperity partnership talks between Mexico and Canada that President Bush initiated. The old boss is starting to look a lot like the new boss. Robert Gates is going to remain on the job as defense secretary for at least a year. Plenty of sources knew about this meeting, uh, told us and others that it was at Hillary Clinton's house, but clearly uh, it wasn't. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. We see you causing a depression so you can blow out the economy and consolidate it and bankrupt it. We know that you are enemies of free humanity and we are here standing against your tyranny. The Obama deception, the truth strikes back. Barack is like the manager of Burger King. All presidents are including Bush. It's like this. When your fries are cold, if your burger is not done right, you go back to Burger King, America, or your government, and you say, my burger's cold. I want new fries. First, you go to the cashier. That's the courts. You argue to the courts. The courts, if you can't get no justice with the cashier, you say, let me see the manager. I want to go to the Supreme Court. I want to see the president. The manager comes out. Hi, what can I do for you? Now, the manager can override the decisions of the cashier. But you never get to see the franchise owner of Burger King. If you really have a problem with your burger, you need to go see the franchise owner. We need to go to the top or to the bottom. <laughs> we need to go to where the real architecture of government is. And it's not in a president. It's in a global scheme. Politics in America today is identical to pro wrestling. And what I mean by that is, in front of the cameras and the public, we all hate each other. I'm going to kick my opponent's butt. I'm going to wail him from here to high water and beat the crap out of him. Yet behind the scenes, we all are friends going out to dinner. We went to dinner together. And, and, and it's all a work. All intermarried. Show business. It's show biz. And that's what you have today in politics. The Democrats and Republicans aren't really opposed to each other. Left and right mean nothing. The only thing that counts is, are you working for Wall Street or are you trying to defend the people against the financiers? It's pretty obvious that there's some gigantic financial institutions that have been pulling the strings of politicians in this country for a long time. And the, the, just the fact that we have it set up where they can donate millions of dollars to these guys' funds, these guys' campaigns. I mean, how do we not expect it, it all to go bad? America in 2009 was desperate for change. 
The past eight years had been a disaster. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> George W. Bush, who had claimed to be a conservative, had tripled the size of the federal government, shredded the Constitution, and destroyed the image of the United States worldwide. Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Endless wars, over a million dead Iraqis, and more than 5,000 dead U.S. troops. The Patriot Act warrantless domestic wiretapping and spying. The end of Posse Comitatus. The rise of the treasonous North American Union. A deepening recession, sliding towards total economic collapse. These factors and other abuses had the American people in a state of panic for their future and the very existence of the United States. The elite were in trouble the people were beginning to see through their facade, past their front man, and to the ruling elite behind the throne. For the first time in U.S. history, both parties were universally hated. Congress had a 9% approval rating. The globalist agenda had stalled. And then, onto the scene came a man who promised change. Change we could all believe in. Barack H. Obama promised to end the war and bring our troops home fast. He pledged to uphold the Constitution and to stop the federal government from spying on the American people. Candidate Obama told American workers that he was going to get them out of NAFTA and GATT. And he's already breaking those promises. In this film, we will prove that Obama says one thing and does another, and that he works for the very same elite interests that Bush served the very interest engineering the financial collapse and formation of a dictatorial world government. This film is not about left or right. It is nonpartisan. Our past documentary films are among some of the most damning indictments of George W. Bush and his administration that have ever been made. If humanity has any hope of affecting real change for the better, it will not come from the Madison Avenue false reality makers who have cast Barack Obama as the savior of the world. To alter our course from tyranny to liberty, to defeat the corrupt elite, we must get past the puppets and confront the real power structure of the planet. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Webster Griffin Tarpley is an accomplished geopolitical analyst and historian. Among his scholarly works are the unauthorized biographies of George Herbert Walker Bush and Barack Hussein Obama. Since Bush the Elder made his speech at the United Nations back in September of 1990 talking about the new world order, I think I've become confused about what's actually going on in the world. The new world order is a more palatable name for the Anglo-American world empire. It's the planetary domination of London, New York, Washington, over the rest of the world. It's hard to get people to join that or think they have a part in it if you call it the Anglo-American world empire. If you call it the New World Order, then people in India or someplace like that or the European Union might think, well, there's something in that for us too. But that's not what it is. It's the Anglo-American New World Order. It's really the old world order. It's the British Empire morphing into the American Empire. The U.S.-British world empire is, is what you're going to get. Combines of powerful men have always battled with each other over the levers of power. Gerald Salente is recognized as one of the world's foremost trends forecasters and as the founder of the Trends Research Institute. 